Chrome Pipes and Pinstripes, episode 211. What's it like to win the Amber? All right, hello and welcome to episode 211 of Chrome Pipes and Pinstripes. I'm your host, Roy Boy from RoyBoyProductions.com. That's a website where you can find all the hot rod and custom car show photos that I take for you all over the country. There's over 100,000 images at this point from the last 17 years, and it spans from coast to coast, from from uh, every every state in the, in the lower 48, and all of it is on the website. And it's all free to look at. You can buy photos. In fact, I really encourage you, if you like a photo, please buy one because that's how I put gas in my tank to go to the next show. Neither here nor there. It's all up there for free, though, so you can look at it because I want to encourage you to get out and go to a hot rod and custom car show. So even if you don't have a car, go check out the show. Meet some of the people there. Maybe you'll find a car in a field. Maybe you drag it home. Make it run again. Get it out. It doesn't have to be some show car. It can be anything. Anything cool and old, put some time and effort into it. Make it safe to drive. Make it cooler by, you know, whatever you want to do. Lower it, chop it, channel it, paint job, pinstripe, whatever. Make it cool and timeless cool, not trendy cool. Cool cool the way cool was in the 50s and 60s because that cool will never go out of style. Make it cool. Go to a car show. Meet some people. I guarantee you're going to meet some great folks and your life will be better for it. That's why I do all of this. So this episode of Chrome Pipes and Pinstripes is with uh, a buddy of mine from Wichita who recently had an honor that uh, not a lot of people in this world have ever had. The shop that he owns built a car that won the Amber Award, America's Most Beautiful Roadster. Uh, That award is given away at the Pomona uh, um, Grand National Roadster Show in January each year. And it's a huge honor to win. This is the first time that we know of that the uh, the award has ever gone to a car uh, built in Kansas. And actually, it's owned by somebody from Kansas as well. It's really cool, long-term project. We go into all the details of it. We tell the whole story in this episode. I think you're really going to enjoy it. This episode with Tim Devlin from Devlin Rod and Customs. Before we do the interview, I just want to talk about something I've been doing lately, and this is not really a sponsorship. This is kind of a deal where I get a commission, but uh, I've been doing a thing called HelloFresh, where they send you, and I'm on the three-meal plan. They send me, once a week, they send me a box that's got enough ingredients in it to build three different meals. It comes with everything you need. Like if it needs a pinch of this uh, uh, spice or that spice, it comes with just a little tiny baggie of it. It's everything you need. There's nothing extra to store afterwards. There's nothing to throw away. It gives you two servings per meal or four if you choose that option. And it gives you an instruction card on how to make the meal. They all take, the ones I'm doing take like 25 to 45 minutes at the most. They're really tasty. And I don't have to go to the grocery store for them. I I don't have to go buy some jar of such and such just so I can try a meal then have that the 98% of that jar in my shelf for 10 years. It's just the little stuff you need. If you don't like a meal, well, the next time that they have that meal come up in the the rotation, you just skip it. You go to some other meal. They've got anywhere from like 25 or 30 different meals a week you can choose. And it's really cool stuff. So if you want to find out more about it, go to RoyBoyProductions.com slash HelloFresh. That's RoyBoyProductions.com slash HelloFresh. You can earn yourself up to $120 worth of free meals and you earn me a credit. I think it's like a $10 credit if you sign up for it. So just, you know, telling you about it. So maybe I can get some cheaper groceries for myself. You know, this works good for everybody. So enjoy it. Make some meals at home. Skip going out all the time for the, for the drive through or whatever. Have some more, some better quality food in your life. It's HelloFresh. RoboProductions.com slash HelloFresh. We're here at uh, Devlin Rod and Custom in downtown Wichita, Kansas. Uh, Tim Devlin's here with me. We're going to talk a little bit about the f- recent addition to the trophy case, the Amber Award. Yeah. You know, just a little thing. You know, just a yeah, just just, a just one. one of the biggest awards in the industry. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, congratulations on that. Thank you. Very I know much. it was it was a whole crew that did it, it, it is, and of yeah, course the owners no question, and everything. No question. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the car first. So. Uh, where, where did the whole thing start? You know, so it, it started um, quite a long time ago, actually. You know, about seven, eight years ago, our customer, Jeff Bro, who's from Wichita, he's, he's not an out-of-state client. He's, he's somebody that we've worked with in the past as well, Okay, um, built a number of cars with. Um, he approached me and said, look, I, I 
I want to build a 34 Chevrolet Roadster. And I said, well, you know, I don't know the Chevrolets that well, but I'm pretty sure they're pretty rare. Right. Um, and if that's what you want to build, that that's great. But it's not an easy platform to build from like the Fords are. Right. Um, Fords are pretty natural. You you know, you pull some fenders off and you massage them a little bit and, and they take to, to hot riding pretty quick and pretty easy. And there's, there's a template for this. Yeah. This looks good. This looks good. I mean, I'm sure with right. the Chevrolet, you're kind of going... We're going to have to do some design work here that, you know, with the Ford, we might not have to do, you know, mm -hmm. you'd still yeah, do a no, rendering, of no course, question. but yeah. No question. And, and Jeff's idea, um, you know, one, once he found a car and everything, it was, okay, well, well, let's talk about this. What is what is the ideas that's floating around in your head? Because this is your car, and ultimately the way we work as a shop, it's not my car in the end. It's, it's the customer's car. Right. So tell me what it is that you're thinking. And his idea from the beginning was, I want to, I want to have old technology and new technology together. Um, I want to have tradition, and I want to have these modern components to it. Um, and and that's not, that's not something new. It's not groundbreaking. You know that that's being done all the time anymore. Right. Um, but how do you how do you meld those two together and still have something that in the end is is crosses that and and doesn't go too far one direction or another. Um, and is still elegant, still a hot rod, and you know, and and that's that's the challenge. It's a balancing act. It, there, it, it yeah. is. Um, and and so in in doing that, one of the the when we first started doing renderings with Eric Black, um, it was it w it really had more of a modern look and feel about it, and you know, and it was just nothing was it was like okay this is it's good looking but it's not it wasn't terribly exciting in right. my mind right okay. it's like it's just a little too modern the big inch wheels and skinny tires just it's like uh, the looks there but it's not quite all there and finally eric black sent a profile he's like okay we're, we're down to the point where we've done all these different angles and here's the profile and he totally flipped the script on us and put <laughs> put traditional uh, you know we still had these Halibrand looking wheels but they were once again big inch wheels and mm -hmm. and he he put you know bias ply tires on it and all of a sudden it took on a whole new tra fully traditional look from the outside and we're like that's it that's we're done um and, and it was it was amazing it was just that aha moment of here it is because yeah. we it was just like okay this is cool whatever whatever he's been doing has been great but all of a sudden here it is and 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 even the colors like we didn't he he gave it to us in blue and we're like <laughs> we're done so let's go build a car <laughs> you know and and so that 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 was it that and and so i got to give him a lot of credit for giving this and and you know we were looking for a designer i told jeff i said you know you've got to find somebody out there that you like and i'm, I'm going to give you some names and it, even if you don't see a a car that you like, do you like the style? Because if you don't like right. what he's giving you, then you're not going to like what he gives you. Right. Yeah. And, and so he landed on Eric Black and Eric is a very traditional guy. I mean, right. everything he does is very traditional. He's done some, some stuff that's got a little modern tweak to it, but not much. And he took this and here we go. Yep. Well, and we talked a little bit before we started recording about, you know, social media stuff. And that's one place where you can send somebody as a customer and go, okay, Go look at these designers' work. Mm -hmm. Here's an online gallery of, yeah. of stuff they've done for years and really get a feel for the style that they, not only the artwork that they do, because I would say the style of the artwork is probably less important than the design of the car. But sometimes, sometimes you'll get like a real stripped down design of the car that just that's it, that's what I need. And then you could have somebody else who does that, who does a design, and then they've, you know, they kind of artsied up the sure. print yep. and you know you don't want to trick it no. uh, trick the eye of a of somebody who may not maybe an owner doesn't you know see the difference yeah. there you know yeah um so and, and, and that's a fun process i mean i bet i that's one of my favorite things to go through is is okay you've sat down and you've you, you've you've listened to all these ideas that a customer has and now you got to sit down and talk to somebody like eric black or tavis highlander or whoever and say okay here's the vision here's the thoughts and then all of a sudden, a week later, you get something back and you're like, wow, it's amazing that somebody can can hear that and then 
Here you go. Here it is. It's it, not a talent I possess, so I'm. <laughs> no, it's, me it's, neither. It's magic when I see it happen. It I was like, "You read my mind." Well, oh. No, you told me what he wanted. Well, yeah, yeah but, but I still couldn't put it in that. Exactly. I mean, the words I said didn't make that. No, so. no question. And then, and then, <laughs> and then the ability with you know this all being in, in a digital forum today is okay. Let's let's change this or let's make this color and. It's it's amazing yeah. that how how quickly you can get those things and and obviously I'm sure it takes more than what I say is how right. quickly but it, it is it feels like it, okay it's relatively I'm, in 30 quickly. minutes I'm going to give you another set and it's going to have this and but you can flush out so many ideas and save a client money I know it's expensive to go through these rendering processes right. but you know it it isn't just okay I I needed a profile that was our starting point but. We also did the engine. We also did the firewall. We also did the gauges, the interior, the seats. I mean, we did all of that in rendering. Um, and, and, and they happened as we were building once we started with that profile. But, you know, it's, it's just amazing to have those in your arsenal to be able to, um, whether it is to take the, the gauges and say, okay, Classic Instruments, here's what I want you to yeah. do. You, you, here it is. This is what I need. Now let's figure out how to make that work in 3D and in moving parts and pieces. Yep. It, it, so it's a great, great advantage. And there's probably designers that have worked in that realm before that Classic Instruments goes, okay, they know to give me enough room here for yep. this mechanism because yes, true. you know, can't put it yep. too close to a bezel or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, I imagine... You know, I, I, I imagine we both know builders who, if they just had a plan to build off of, could have done so much more over the years. I see some guys with crazy, incredible talent, but they they just never had a, a good design to build. Yeah. And then I see other shops that are just like, okay, no, we're, we're building this. And it might feel less creative in the build process, but I'm sure there's still places for all of the fabricators to okay, this looks the way it's supposed to do, but on the backside of here to make life easier for everybody, we're going to do this. Or, I mean, I'm sure there's changes that sure. doesn't take yeah. all the creativity out right, of it is right, what I'm saying. Right. No, yeah. that's true. Some of those that's guys true. just crave that, I want total controls. Like, oh, well, no. This, draw, this drawing here is what we want. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I can respect that. I mean, but once again, as I said earlier in this, uh, for my shop and what yeah. I want to do for our clients is I want to give them what they want. It's their money. Yeah. So you if know? you can see it ahead of time and sign yeah. off for it, then all you have to do is wait for the one-to-one scale version to be yeah. built. You know, <laughs> it's like it takes a little longer than a drawing, but yeah, we'll get just it for you. A little you. bit, but not much. So, uh, so he he, uh, he gets the car. Mm-hmm. You go through the design process. What was the the first start of working on the car? I mean, was it just to tear down and start so, from scratch? Or no? Well, so we had settled on the Roadster shop for a chassis. Okay. Right? Yep. And and so we've got these renderings from from Eric. And we said, okay, we, we, we need a chassis. I mean, we can't start necessarily building this car. We're not going to be using the chassis to do anything, so the original stuff. So that's all going to be gutted. So basically what we need to do is we need to get the, the body and the original chassis just because it's easy to move up to the Roadster shop and let them scan this thing. Yeah, I've and, heard about that process. It's yeah. pretty interesting. So, so we, we, took, we basically gutted the car, made it to the point where it was really easy just to separate body from frame, and got that up to them and... They went through the scanning process, and from there it was, okay, we've got all these points scanned, and now we need to fill that in, but we need to talk about what's this chassis going to look like. And so where we started was we started with the control arms, the front control arms. Um, and, and, and instead of looking at the chassis overall, it was, well, this is a fenderless car. What people are going to see when they first walk up to right. it is going to be these control arms. And so yeah. that's where we – that was our jump-off point. And, and – it didn't really have this grand vision of what exactly it needed to be when we started with them. We just knew that it had to work with the design that we've been given and, right. and, and be able to cross this traditional and modern approach. Um, and, you know, one of the first things that, that we talked about was, okay, do we try and, because we're trying to stay traditional, do we try to make them look like an axle or, you know, like a drop axle? And that's been done before, and it, yeah, it doesn't really work. Um, and then it was, okay, well, you guys are in the aircraft capital of the world. Let's try and do something that has a little bit of an aircraft approach. And we're like, okay, go ahead and try that. And it looks Star Wars-y and it, right. just, it didn't work. And so we're like, well, let, let's just try and pull off some cues of the car and just try and do something new and something elegant and think simple. Don't, don't worry about any of that other stuff. And they came back to us a week later and had, had this elegant look that – that had some recesses to it, and it, it moved well with the body of the car. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, that's it. I mean, once you saw it, and you, you just knew. Right. I mean, and, and, and so that was just another thing. You're like, yep, that's it. Push on. Keep going. 
And, and you know, the other thing that we said is it, it, that I say we, when I say we, I mean me and Jeff. Mm-hmm. And talking about the car was being fenderless. We wanted very little outside. And how could we do that? And, and they're like, well, we need to try and do some sort of a cantilever suspension system where we don't have these con- these coilovers sitting outside of the the rails. Right. And, and and so <laughs> that was the other thing is like, okay, how do we package all this and make it you know come together? And so the Roadster shop was instrumental in once they were all done designing the the, the chassis. It was like, okay, th- this is an incredibly looking, this is an incredible piece. It flows, it moves, it's not just a ladder frame, it does a lot of different things. And oh, by the way, this is going to be a complicated floor pan that we're going to have to build around this. Right. Um, and so, so going back to then what's the next step, it took a year for the roaster shop to build that chassis. So it, it was just, and, and according to Jeremy, it was the most complicated chassis they had done to that date. Wow. Um, and and so once we got that finally in 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 stock, it was okay. Now we've got to basically cut the 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 car apart so that we can even get it to sit over it. And and then once we started doing that, um, it was okay. Let's let's try and figure out what our profile is of the car and where do we need to go because yeah. we know we need to build floors and all that. But what's what do we need to do to the body to get it to where it's getting into the start starting to look like what Eric's got here? Um, and we did a lot of stuff out of cardboard. I mean, okay. um, you know, if you looked at, at some of our build pictures, we were cutting up cardboard and building, you know, hood sides and tops and windshield frames and all kinds of stuff, just trying to get an idea for, okay, how, where are we going to have to make movement of the body? Where are we going to have to make our cuts? And are we going to have to lengthen anything or shorten anything? And what's, what's going to happen? And so that was really, that yeah. was a, an important piece of the puzzle of just going through those exercises to see what we needed to do next. And then from there, once we knew we, we, we had those pieces in place of, okay, we've got a plan for that, it was let's go attack the, the, the windshield frame and the convertible top. Um, we ended up building basically a, a top and a f- windshield frame out of round rod and then taped it all up um, and, and then had WSU come over and scan it. Oh. So the NIAR department uh, um, was actually instrumental in us building that car as well of coming over here and scanning various parts and pieces and areas or 3D printing some stuff so that we can use those for mock-up. I mean, yeah. we had various parts and pieces that they did for us, including some that actually stayed on the car as final pieces. Oh, wow. Um, so so anyways, so having them in Wichita was, was huge. Uh, but anyways, they scanned that, and then that was sent off to a machine shop so that they could then create this Duval windshield frame that we had designed based on the profile of the car as well as what we were going to do with the convertible top was speed uh, American speed had what they call their speed 33 that has a convertible top system that folds down into the body of the car Mm -hmm. and um, Jeff and I were at the the Roadster show one year just kind of scouting things and and looking at the it's like you know my Corvette has a similar system. He has a 63 Corvette convertible. Okay. And he said, my Corvette's got a similar system to that. Could we do something like that? I'm just thinking, this is a tiny, tiny car, and we're <laughs> going to lose a lot of space. But, yes, it is something we can do. Um, so let, let's find out. And so we reached out to, to American Speed and said, guys, one, w- would you work with us on a top like this, and knowing that we're not going to buy a whole body? We're just we just want to buy the top and the hinge systems, um, and, and, but I need to first see if the measurements are even close. And so we, we, they, they were absolutely, yeah, sure, we'll share anything you want. We'll help you out in any way we can. And so they gave us measurements off of their system, and it was pretty close. It was pretty close to the Chevy, and we said, okay, build us a system that we can, we can buy, and, um, and we'll modify it. And so that's what we did with, with the convertible top system is we modified all those bows to mm-hmm. be the length and the width that we needed and to get them to sit down right on the body. So um, so those were the next steps that, that we went through was getting that. And then we started building um, the structure and the, the floor pans yeah. from there and building out. And the 30s cars are notoriously, well, I should say the 30s Chevy cars are notoriously full of wood. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. It, it's a wood car with a metal mm-hmm. skin, yep. for lack of a better term. So I imagine going through the whole process here, like, okay, well, we're not going to go back in here with some pine like is in here now. What, you know, So you probably had to do a lot of rebuilding just to have structure. Yeah, and, and, and we had to you know, brace everything up before we oh, yeah. took all that wood out, obviously. 
Um, but yeah, we, we built all new structure everywhere we went. Um, you know, we used a lot of just, um, just square tubing okay. as, as structure for that. Um, it, you know, you can, you can manipulate that square tubing pretty easily. And um, in a lot of the same ways that wood can be manipulated. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, it's, exactly. It's so probably a similar, um, design yeah. to, to, to what the yeah. wood was done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what we use for a lot of structure and, um, and yeah, so, so yeah, that, that wood, there was a lot, <laughs> there was a lot of wood in that car and, and as well as, um, you know, that's a Holden bodied car. Um, so it, you know, it was from Australia yeah. and we actually found Australian money in it when we took it apart, oh, wow. which was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, and it, it had, uh, it had a right, uh, a right hand drive, um, system that came with it when the customer bought it. Yeah. So yeah, pretty unique. Was there ever a thought like, well, maybe we should make this car right hand drive or, you know, we, we, we talked about it as more of a joke, but it's like, okay, would that be unique or, and, and our customer's like, well, look, I want to drive this thing when it's done. I don't want that. Yeah. Okay, fine. It'd make it harder to live yeah, with it. You it, know? Would. it would. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, there's some of these, you know, there was an era of show cars of, if I can do one more thing to it, I get more points. And so there was a lot of stuff done for the sake of gaining points, not for a sake of this looks good, this feels good, this makes the car better. Yeah, uh, we've had that. I've had that discussion with Dave Lane before. Is like you know he goes, I'm not going to do this if it doesn't make the car better. I don't yep. care if it get more points. This is the way it needs to be. And I'm more builders that get to do that, the more we end up with more beautiful cars in the end. Agreed. I think. But you know, there are some '60s show cars out there that uh, I appreciate what they are. <laughs> But I just, I wouldn't <laughs> it's do it again much. if I was doing one. Yeah, no, it's a um, little much. So what'd you get into? Uh, so the pl- what's the, uh, what engine is, uh, and transmission do we have in the- So we've, we've, we've got an LS platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a dart block and heads LS. Okay, dart. Um, and then it's a, it's a TKO five speed okay. for the transmission. So customer wanted to have three pedals. Um, going back to this combination of, of modern tradition, it's like, okay, we, we really want to have a modern motor. Um, but we don't want to go down that road so far as to, I don't want to completely disguise this, that it's, that it's a small block and not, not right. an LS base. I, I'm not going to go that road, but we do want to make it look pretty. Yeah. We want it to be this to. elegant piece. We want to get rid of the ugliness that, that they have. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's a utilitarian piece. It's got bracing built into the, the castings and, and it's, it's right that there's nothing wrong with that, right. but when you're looking at it as a, as an art form, as a piece that we're going to be showing off, it doesn't have that. And, right. and so it was a combination of, okay, how do we get rid of the ugliness of a, of necessarily of an LS motor, but also make it feel a little more traditional, like a, like a traditional small block, but right. not going too far in that direction. Yeah. There's a, you know, Chevrolet's answer is just make plastic covers that cover yeah. the whole thing up. And that doesn't really work for no. a hot rod application. No. So no. yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a, uh, styling that needs to be done like i said you don't want it to make don't want to make it look like a small block Chevy. people do that and people yep. people make ls's look like big block fords yeah. and it's just you're looking at it going something's wrong proportionally and all of a sudden it hits you it's like oh that's sure. a fake distributor exactly. on there and they're like well yeah it's kind of silly to build yeah. a fake distributor for it so yeah uh for, for a, like a ford and a chevy and a ford type application um you know, the TK, the TKO, that'll be a nice drivable piece. As long as he's not trying to do some, you know, John Force type burnouts, <laughs> that thing will live will live a long time for him. Uh, and then, so what kind of rear end do you have underneath so it? So it's, it's got a winner's quick change. Okay. It. Yeah. So it's got one of their uh, hot rod quick change. Um, and, and that was... That was a, a, a departure from our original design oh. in that Jeff wanted to have independent rear suspension. Okay. And... and you know, my even comment, more to package in a small. And, fact. and that was the thing. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? That's going to be an awful lot coming out of those quarter panels back there and those fender wells. I said, you know, I don't really think that's going to work. Um, I understand why you want to to suggest that and recommend that, but I just don't think it worked. And he and he was quick to realize, yeah, that's that's not going to do it. Let's 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 go to a quick change. That would be cool that now we've got on the chassis alone, now we've got this modern independent suspension up front with cantilever rocker arm and, and we've, we've got a quick change in the back, but also has the cantilever, you know, rocker suspension. So now we've got a little bit of both. Yeah. So, it's yeah. That, that blending of modern and yep. traditional again yep. Yep. And, and in a tasteful way. Yeah. Um, and they just look cool. Yeah. They just I mean, look there's, cool. It's hard to beat the look yeah. of, a, of a quick change. Uh, you know, I've got a friend of mine that, you know, friends of mine that do like, oh, we've got this old traditional car and it's got the two speed in it. Well, and then she, uh, you know, went out and drag raced it and 
the the really expensive two speed <laughs> looked great, but it's gone now. There's a nine inch in there <laughs> because you know because of big John Force yeah. type burnout. So sure. uh, you know there's, the quick change is a, is a nice happy medium in there of getting you some some performance and mm-hmm. also the styling. Yeah. Um, so how long was the project from the time you guys first started talking about it until you showed up in Pomona? Yeah. So I. I I want to say we're somewhere around that seven to eight year range okay. um, from from here's here's the talk and here's some renderings to we, we're showing up and, and the last two and a half, maybe now nah, I'd say two and a half years were solid of everybody in this shop working on one car, trying to get that thing done for the Roadster show. Um, you know, we didn't take a break during the pandemic. Right. We didn't have any of that, which was kind of a strange time to to be down here because there really wasn't anything happening downtown. We were oh, the only bet. ones driving to work, which was kind of eerie. But having said that, it, we, we needed all that time, um, including needing the time that, unfortunately, the, the, the Roadster Show didn't happen. We thought it was going to be extended to May, and then it right. and it just didn't happen at all. But that was turned out to be a blessing in disguise for us. It gave us more time to, okay, take a step back and make sure we're still doing things right in the right direction and just having extra time to finish the car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, two and a half years solid, um, <laughs> you know, with, with four or five guys at any given time uh, on one project and it's not a big car. It's not, it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's not, not a big it's not, I was going to say there's yeah. a Cadillac behind this. It's not yeah. like you can have four or five guys who can't even like, you know, be, they're not within right. arm's reach of each other. Yeah. Four people on that car, you pretty much are in each other's space yep, the entire you time you're at it. And, so. and if you're doing that for two and a half years, there's oh, yeah. <laughs> there's some emotions involved. Oh, I bet. <laughs> well, and then so I was thinking about the you know the not doing GNRS for 2021, mm-hmm. and then you know what's going to be there this year? Everybody's got another year, and it's right, like, is it going right. to be is it going to be a huge crop of cars? Is it going to just be real refinement? And I think we saw kind of a, there were there was a lot of really cool cars there, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of cars there that were long term projects. Yeah that you're like okay yeah they probably really needed that extra yeah. that time frame to get there uh, and it, we were one of those it, it was it was it was a fun one you know, i was supposed to be there we couldn't go so i'm sitting at home going well i know three of the i know people involved with three of the cars mm-hmm. there it was like which one do you want to pick it's like i can't <laughs> i can't pick i know for different reasons i want sure. these three all to win yeah. and, and it was a uh, it was really cool to see just the quality that was there this year yeah. Um, so well, let's talk about that. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and we didn't know, you know, from, from our perspective, it's kind of the same thing. We're sitting there wondering, okay, you've got, <laughs> What's you've got an extra up? year. What's going to show <laughs> up? Um, you know, we, we, we love our car. We love what we're doing and we're going to win. We want to win. That's why we're going out there. Right. We're hoping to, but you never know. Oh yeah. You know, we had heard that Brizio was building this fantastic car and sure enough, he was, right. and it was gorgeous. Um, so yeah, it was the same kind of thing. We're like, what else is going to be there? Because we only knew of the really the Brizio car. You know, it's you know the Super Bowl. Those two teams go into that knowing who they're going to play. Mm-hmm. They've got a year's worth of film, and they might even already played them. Yeah. So you know, there's there's tons of knowledge there. This is a different deal because you you know it's an artistic endeavor that's later judged, but you still are competing, mm-hmm. and you're so you're still going in like okay. Who's showing up? Is this juggernaut car going to yeah. be there, or you know who's? You I, just don't know. And it's that's some of the things you probably have to prepare yourself for. Okay, our goal is this: we will be happy if we make it there and back in one piece. Kind of you, know, where you have to set no. your places where you're going to be happy with it, Robbie. And, right? And, and and I said that. I mean, I I was a bit of the the devil's advocate. It was just <laughs> you know, hey guys, we 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 brought our A game. We did everything that we could, and you know what? If the chips don't fall that way. It's not because we did anything wrong. We, we, we did everything right. Yeah. We brought the right car. The combinations of colors and finishes and everything was right. And everybody was telling us that. But you know what? Things happen. Right. It's okay. And, it's there okay. Was, and it was a strong field, too. Sure. So, And it was one of those deals. I mean, you could have been coming home from there going, well, we didn't get it. But we look at this. Look at what we built. Yeah. You know? I, I, no question. And, and, and I still look at it that way. <laughs> I, you, you know, it, it, because oh by the way you don't get to bring home that 12 foot trophy so right. it's, so we so we bring home the car and we're like god look at this thing it's just it's just incredible it's it's amazing that this group from Wichita Kansas did that the the second Chevy ever or non second non Ford ever for that yeah. matter um, and we did it, and here we are. It's great. It's fantastic. And first time Kansas is, uh, has uh, brought the trophy home. Yeah, to my knowledge. That, that's that's what, as far as I can yeah. uh, understand. It, it's a really cool thing, and uh, it's awesome to see. 
I don't want to sound sound weird about this, but also see somebody that's out of the normal realm of the you know. There's there's some shops that have won it so a sure. bunch of times, and, yeah. and you, most of them are West Coast kind of things. Yeah. It's, it's cool to see something from yeah. out of that circle, yeah, uh, getting some attention there. Sure. So sure. let's let's go back like a week before you leave. Hmm. A week before you leave, I'm sure you're thrashing to get ready. Mm-hmm. And you're probably not sleeping much. No, you're, no you're, we're all you know, down here. Everybody's families is texting them, going, "Are you going to come home for dinner tonight, yeah. or are we going to see it all?" Yeah, you're putting those last finish, those last few touches on there. When you get to the point, you're like, "Okay, this is as done as it's going to be. Let's load it on the trailer." Mm-hmm. Is there any relief to you at that point, or does the stress load up? Because now we've got to get to California. Yeah, you know, there there was some relief. I mean. Uh, when the car was finally on the trailer, there was no question that that was. It, I guess there, there's milestone moments throughout the entire right, build, yeah. right? Um, you know, w- one of the the last big ones was getting it to upholstery, and it was like, okay, that's a that was like a, okay, now we can relax just a little bit. And that, <laughs> so the same thing. It was like getting that thing on the trailer. That was a okay. That's a big one. But yet, yeah, there's this big hurdle of we still need to get that car out there safely, right? Um, and one of the things that that uh, w- was my mandate is, is we're not stopping. We're not stopping at a hotel. We're not going to stay the night somewhere. We're going to all take turns and we're going to drive this thing all the way through. And the only place we're going to stop is in Pomona, California at our hotel. <laughs> and that's it. Um, cause you never know, you hear horror stories oh, about yeah. things happening. So I didn't want anything like that to, to, to break our, our chances. Um, but no, it, it, it was, that getting that car in the trailer and, and knowing that, yeah, okay, we're going to have to redetail the car when we get there and make sure everything's all good. But yeah, that was huge. It was like, okay, we're going, this yeah. is happening. We're doing this. Um, so yeah, this is a big moment. And I, I imagine it's somewhere between exhilaration of, Oh my gosh, this is happening and exhaustion of getting mm. to that point. Yeah. There's that. Uh, too. When was your first night of good sleep in that whole process? <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 it was actually when we finally got to Pomona um, because we got there in, in, in driving the whole way. We actually we left early Sunday morning mm-hmm. um, and got to the hotel Monday around 11. I ended up by the time I got to my hotel room, I crashed until the next day. And that was great. That was that was the, the best night of sleep I had had in, in at least a couple of months. So it was it was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so th- so then you're there. You have to get set up. You have to get redetailed. You have to get everything mm-hmm. ready. Um, what is the judging process like from your point of view? You know, um, I had tried to gauge what that was going to be going into it by looking for YouTube videos and and asking some guys that I knew that had been through the process. And, and I kept the way the planning and the discussions that we had amongst ourselves were basically going off of what I'd seen in some of those videos and discussions that I'd had. Um, and so was prepared for this real formal interview and, you know, the dog and pony show of going back and forth and, right. and all that. And we get there and it wasn't that it was way more informal. It wasn't that they weren't interested in the car and didn't ask good questions and you didn't discuss things, but it was a lot more informal than, than, than what mm-hmm. I had seen. Um, and I don't know if that was intentional this year compared to years past or if it just happened to be that way, um, but it just was. It, 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 but they, <laughs> they, all, they, they all congregate on the car. Um, you know, they look at the profile of the car. They want to make sure that, that your client sits right in the car. Um, and, and with ours, you know, a lot of them, you never see them with the tops off of them or right. doing any of that. With ours, our top goes down into the body. And so we could show them those things. We could show them removing our hood sides to see more of the motor. And so in, in, what we were told was we were going to have about 20 minutes with the with the judges. Usually that's split like 10 minutes of discussion um, and then 10 minutes of them looking at the car and having more yeah. Q&A. So seven and, and a half years. And we got 35 minutes. minutes. Oh, okay. We got 35 <laughs> minutes with them. And, now, and, and so, yeah, you're right. How do you condense all that? Well, the same thing with these build books that you put out. Right. Uh, because we did, the, we did a judge's book and a build book that sat with the car. Okay. And how do you take 15,000 pictures and condense that into a book that, you know, is 20 or 30 pages? You can't. I right. mean, you just can't capture everything. Um, but 
that's what you have to do. Exactly. It's yeah. a it's a heck of a calling process. Like nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Yes, no, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, that, that's a whole whole separate job in of itself. I think you, I think I saw where you said uh, Grant Cox would yep. come down the hip with it. And yep. I've known Grant for Grant for like to, gosh, I want to say like twenty five years now. Yeah. What uh, when you guys were going through that process? Where were you in the build process? Well, so and that was that was another thing. We were really hoping that we'd have this this build book that was completely finished because we've got a completely finished car, right, but we didn't yeah. have a completely finished car. So at some point we had to make the decision of, okay, you know, you, if you're at the show and the car is sitting in front of you, you don't need all these finished photos in a build book because the car is sitting in front of you. You can see all Turn that. Turn the pages, look yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so if I'm looking at a build book, I want to see what's underneath those final finishes. I want to see what's underneath the, you know, yeah. underneath the body and in the chassis and those hidden areas. And so we said, well, let's just focus on that then. Let, let's just put our build book together and show the things that you can't see there. Right. Um, and, and so we're going to go back though and do a, if you will, a coffee table book. Mm -hmm. um, that, that will have these finished photos of the, of the car and will be something nice that, that our customer can have and and we'll have a copy of, and and, and that'll be nice to see. But yeah, it's once again, the chore of going from, like I said, (laughs) 15,000 photos to a few hundred and, and hoping that that gave the judges or whoever's walking up to the car. I mean, you know, like at one point, you know, on, I think it was Sunday, Chip Foos is there at the show, and he's sitting there looking at this book, and he's, you know, there for like 15, 20 minutes going through the pages, and you're like, wow, he's spending the time, and he's, I mean, he, he cares. He wants to see what, what this group and did. I'm sure, I'm sure in the back of your head is like, is this a good thing he's taking yeah, this right, or right. a bad thing? Yeah. Is this- <laughs> he's just, just laughing inside, and look, look what we did. Yeah. No, I mean, he was he was extremely complimentary, and good. and, um, and, and, and and it was great to, to hear that type of you know, affirmation, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a great group of technicians over here and, 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 and I guess I don't want to get too far down the road in these discussions and, and not give those yeah, guys yeah. the credit, you know, um, Austin Sackett, Brandon Wagerly, Gage Sackett, Dave Wareheim were the, the, the four technicians that saw this car through to the end and were instrumental in, and in, in what it looks like and the success that this car has. Um, and, and I can't thank them enough for, because they, you know, they they were down here, you know, not seeing their families, right. missing out on holidays or their kids event or whatever it is to get this car done. Um, and, um, and, and then went with us on the trip and, 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 you know, all that kind of yeah. stuff. And, and will also help us campaign this car throughout the rest of this year. Um, and, and so it, it's a team effort, but those guys, those guys are huge. Um, they're extremely talented, and uh, I'm in awe of all the things that they're able to do. Yeah. So, as a group, you're there for the competition. Mm-hmm. You know, you've all pushed through the finish line. You're there. Was there was there any kind of a take a half a day off celebration time leading up to the end of the event there, or were you just focused on let's get to the award ceremony and see how we did? Yeah. So so. <sighs> It was, it was, you know, you, you've been to the, the Roacher show. It's a pretty relaxed setting. The yeah. weather's great. And so once once we got the car, so once you go through the judges uh, area, and then you can finally set up your display. Mm-hmm. And so our goal was, okay, let's get this thing pretty much all set up and done on Wednesday. And then Thursday we can relax and go out to a good celebrate celebratory dinner yeah um and so that's what we did we 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 kind of thursday night was our celebration night and then once the show opened to the public on friday it was okay let's we are always going to have one or two people in the area where the car is at that way a judge comes by wants more questions answered or just anybody's there that wants to ask questions somebody's there for it because yeah. at, at at the roadster show you're not allowed to sit in your display with your car like you are at a lot of indoor shows right. um but we wanted to be to be available so you kind of have to hover around yeah <laughs> which is kind of awkward because it's like well i don't want people thinking that all we're doing is staring at our own car that's not what we're doing <laughs> but but we want to be available you know so yeah yeah yeah, you get real friendly with all the booths right around that area. <laughs> yeah, I, so we had Wizards and SoCal yeah, Speed Shop right by us, and, 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 and so yeah, we spent advanced plating's usually really yeah, close there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think uh, uh, my buddies, uh, I think Tom Stark and Precision Design from Denver had their mm-hmm. Merc not too far. They're yep. in that building there somewhere. Yep. yep. I, I was looking forward to going and hanging out with just so many friends from sure. across the country, across the world. There, that's it's amazing. I've told this story a bunch of times. From Kansas, I can go to Pomona. 
and see more people I know at the Grand National Roaster Show than if I go to the Kansas City World of Wheels. <laughs> Isn't that odd? You know, <laughs> it's 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 a it's half a country away or three hours. I right. know more people there. So, yeah. and so what was uh, what was the support like there? I mean, did you have a lot of friends coming up throughout the weekend that you know just hey, but we're just forever. Congratulations. Was it? What what did that feel like for you throughout the event there? You know, it was um, we met a lot of new friends. Oh, I bet. Uh, so so um, having the opportunity to spend some time with Roy Brizio, John Mumford, the the other car owner that, that Brizio built, mm-hmm. um, the the Root brothers that were right next to us, yeah. um, and, and, and Daryl Hollenbeck, mm-hmm. um, it, it was just fun to have them come up to us and say, Hey, great job. And you know, I, we think you're going to win it, but, but not just that. It's just how nice they were. Yeah. I mean, they were just incredibly gracious people the whole weekend. And, and that wasn't just them. It was everybody surrounding that. So that's what to me made the weekend was so many people just being just, just good, good all around people and having great discussions about things. Um, but yeah, we, we you know, we had heard a lot of good things as people come up, yeah. but you know, you're there at the Amber. I mean, as I walked around, I'm telling people how great right, the cars because right. they are great. They're all great cars. Um, but it, but it was fun to to hear some of that and and to meet people that you you know you only sometimes you only see them in magazines yeah, or read about you've been them. Been reading like, about they've been, been reading Brizio's yeah, name for your entire exactly, hot rod life. You exactly. Know? Never had the opportunity <laughs> to meet the man, and now here it is. Is that he? We're going up against him, and he's telling us how great our car is. Yeah, <laughs> this is it, so cool. And, and a lot of those guys who have been there multiple times were probably, it was probably good to be able to watch them, how they carried themselves through the room, mm-hmm. go, okay, there's no reason for me to be nervous. Look how relaxed they are. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I, they were. I bet there's a lot of that yeah. going on too. And like, they okay. Were. And I wasn't. I, I, was, bet. I was not. I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> Yeah. Did you get a chance to check out the NHRA Museum in that next building? You know over? what? I've I've been to that multiple times, okay. so I didn't I didn't go through it. I didn't know if there would be anything new, but that's a cool, oh, cool so, museum. Yeah. And, and I I don't want to tell the whole world this, but you know, uh, the podcast isn't that big. <laughs> when you're going to that show, you can either as a spectator, you could park way out east and walk about a mile from your car to get into the yeah, show. Don't do that. Or you could pay a little extra money and come in through the NHRA there Museum, show up like an hour before the show yep. starts, to get you know, the, get a tour the and go through there. Yeah. Yep. And then by the time the show opens, you're in and there you're you right go. there by all the good it, stuff. Yeah, you're I walking agree. straight into that building yeah. like a hundred yards away. Yeah, yep. it's a it's a good spot. I mean. Uh, well, okay, let's talk about some of the other plans you have for the car. Uh, you've got the car back here at the shop. Yep. So what other shows do you have on the schedule for it right now? So so we, we have to go back to California at the end of April for the Sacramento show. Okay. So um, that's, a, that's a show that uh, Rod Shows produces that does mm-hmm. the Grand National Road Show. Um, the, the, the Amber Winter is, is, is usually Always showed there as well. that. Right. So we've got to yeah. go back for that. Um, and then once once that's um, done, there's a bit of a of a low pillar because that's you know that's still end of April, May here. Our weather is not quite right. grand in the Midwest quite yet. We're getting there. Um, so in July we'll be going to to Columbus okay. to the Good Guys show. Yeah. Um, and then um, NSRA or go to Louisville. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so we'll do some of those types of shows. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully do a SEMA. Um, you know, I, if anybody out there is listening, we're looking for an invite. For SEMA. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll sell that, but you know, we've, and, and we've been in business 17 years. I've never displayed a car at SEMA mm-hmm. and, and I've always said, I'm, I'm not going to just display a car there because you can, right. you know, if you want to just take a car, you can, but I said, I want, I, I'm going to do it when we're invited. Right. So hopefully we get an invite. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, it would be very cool. And um, with a the car that's so much one-off stuff, there's not a lot of vendors that have a, would have a reason. I mean, paint vendor would have a reason to call, yeah. give you call ARP, classic. ARP, ARP would have yeah. a good one, for, and, and classic would be a good one. Um, but yeah, you know, you're right. It's not like we've got all these off-the-shelf parts so we can say, okay, this is it. I mean, it does have an I did it column in it, and so there's a yeah. few things, but they've all been... Modified, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. But well, and no pressure, John McLeod. I know you've been on yeah. this podcast before, so uh, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I'm uh, sure that Cliff will be able to get a laugh out of that one. Uh, so yeah, good folks over there at Classic. It, yeah, that's the other no, thing. You, know, you talk about some of the great people you've met at the show. Mm-hmm. It seems that this industry, and, and maybe because I love this industry, I have a, a, an unfair advantage, an unfair sight of it in my mind. But every other thing I've done in my life. I don't think I've met the the high percentage of awesome people as I have in the hot rod and custom car world. Agree, couldn't agree more. You know, and there's and giving, there's always and giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always going to be a turd somewhere. But oh, no question. There's the other no people question. over the top make up for it. Yeah, 
and uh, and I'm sure even at that level, we're going for the biggest, literally the biggest hot, the biggest award in hot rodding. Because let's face it, Riddler really isn't a hot rod award anymore yeah. because you have to have fenders to win the dang trophy <laughs> these these days. So it's more of a custom and, and yeah, whatever it you want to call it's it. Different. Yep. But uh, so. Is there any is there any thought to maybe going for like hot rod of the year kind of thing or is that kind I, of a I, so so Columbus has street rod of the year right okay um, yeah. so I think that's that's more in line more in, of a fit in, for the car yeah I mean I I think what I've seen out of the the hot rod of the year that they do in Nashville mm-hmm. really is truly traditional cars it and they're, seems they're to have a little weight towards reliability that, yeah. runs and they run them down the, the quarter race, mile yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that's fine and and it's not that this car couldn't go out and do that but i just i feel like the street rod of the year is a better fit you know we Fits took the, little, yeah. we took the 33 ford that we built a couple oh, yeah, of years right. ago to it and it was a finalist which was great um but i think that's a good fit for that for that, this car yep, so, so we're going to go back for that and then you know like N, uh, the nsra has i believe what they i think it's a builder's showcase right. or something like that that at, I think at that Louisville. Would be a good yep. yeah yep um so we'll do something like that but i i think you know getting a good guys anything of the year would be awesome it's amazing yeah if for nothing else, with that toolbox with a picture oh, of your car. Oh, <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? That would be so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, but, but that goes to the – but that, I think that goes to the client. You know, I it's think like, so. It's kind of yeah. like when I got home from, from, from Pomona, my, my oldest son, who's nine, it's like, so where's the big trophy? Where are we going to put it? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm sorry, buddy. We don't get, we don't get that. It's like, well, what about that smaller trophy? No, we don't get that either. Well, what about that big check? Well, we don't get that. Well, what did you get? I'm like, well, we got the recognition. Right. Well, what's that? <laughs> It's like, I'm going to call a guy with a 3D printer. I'll print you off <laughs> yeah. his 12-inch version of the 12-foot trophy. There you go. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about shop. You know, you said, mm-hmm. uh, was it 17 years? Yeah. The shop's been going? Okay. Years. And is this the the second actual location, or, or did you mm-hmm. start a bit? Bef- no, no this, is, this is location number two. Um, so we're, we're uh, just a half a block from our first location. I was going to say, just right yeah. up the street, right? Okay. Yeah, so um, it, like our address went from um, 1811 to 1611. That's the only <laughs> thing that changed when we moved. I'm um, sure you got, for years, I bet you got people. Is oh, no, we did. Is, there, oh, absolutely. is this wrong? Yeah, yeah no question. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 it's, um, but no, we, so, uh, we were in our old location for 10 years. Okay. Um, it was half the size of the, the, the building that we're in now. Gosh, it seems um, like way smaller than oh, that. Oh, yeah, no doubt. This no building doubt. feels... Uh, way bigger. Feels football way bigger. field's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it, and, it's, and it's something that we built specifically for us and for our needs and the layout, the way we want it. You know, one of the things that we always struggled with at the old shop was everything happened in one room. Right. So, you know, you got a client that you're trying to show off their almost finished car and you got one that's just going through body work and another one that's going through sheet metal work and it just doesn't yeah. work well. Um, it's hard to keep all that clean and organized and impress your clients um, or impress upon them this this look of cleanliness and organization right. when everything's happening in one room. We did our best with it, but over here we can do that way better. And it was, um, you know, and, and having a new shop obviously helps with cleanliness. I mean, well, it's, yeah. it, it looks there's, good in pictures and it's new and all that. There's but not 10 years of buildup on no, this I-beam. And right, just, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But we're starting we're starting to get a little more of that wear and stains in the concrete oh, yeah. and things of that nature. But, uh, but yeah, it's hard to believe that we've already been here Seven years. That yeah. doesn't seem right, but yeah. So let's talk let's talk about you getting into cars then. Okay. So what was the first vehicle that you modified? Uh you know, I does does putting stereos in count? Sure. I was a stereo guy in the nineties. Okay. That's how I met okay. Grant, by the way. Okay. Well, and see, and Grant and I went to high school together. Okay. So we grew up in Augusta together and car stereo stuff was big. And Grant was in it bigger than oh, I yeah. was. He, I, I I yeah, he was way He was into a customer it. of the shop I worked at. Oh, so is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So what shop was that? It, it was a uh, precision sound up Okay. In see, because I always went to Rolling Thunder. Do you remember Rolling yeah. Thunder? Yep. Uh, yeah, yep. on, on Oliver. Um, but so I, I had a eighty six Camaro. Um, why my parents allowed me to get a Camaro was uh, for my first car was bad idea. But anyways, um, that was, let's put a stereo in it. Let's put subwoofers in it because you got to have the subwoofers. Especially back then. with that back glass oh, on there. I had four twelves in it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And two so tens t- is enough in one of so those cars. <laughs> two, two face the, 
Two <laughs> face the back seat passengers right at the back of their heads. Why not? And then the other two face out at the glass. Well, because if you're in the back seat of that car, you already have a six by exactly. nine within two inches of your exactly. head on either side. That's right. The back seat there. So <laughs> that's awesome. So, okay, beyond the stereo stuff, I mean, did you do more than stereo so to he, that car? Or? Well, so so that that was really kind of it. it. I didn't do anything else with that car other than chase water leaks with the T-tops, right? Because <laughs> that thing just constantly. <laughs> and, but, but. After that, I was big into off-road. Okay. So, so my next vehicle was a square body blazer um, that then got lifted and got you know better gears in it for the taller tires and all that. That was yeah. really my first foray into really doing something. Okay. And, but but that was that was what I was into. And oh by the way, all growing up and even going to college, you know, anytime with business courses that okay, write a business plan. It was I'm going to have an off-road shop. That's what I'm going to do. Oh. Um, and so that was always it. But, you know, in, in Augusta, I had a, a best friend um, that really, he and his dad really got me into hot rodding and got me interested in it. Because my dad growing up was into cars and always had shops like ours ha- have cars built. They were always restored models. He, he never had a hot rod built um, when I was a kid. And so it was, and, and it wasn't that he wasn't into hot rods. We always went to the starboard show and we right. liked that stuff, but it wasn't something that he really gravitated towards as that's something he wanted to own at the okay. time. And it was my friend in, in, in Augusta that really, we started going to these hot rod shows and these rod runs. And it was like, wow, I like this world. This world's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I, I can remember at K-State, the power tour would come across I-70 and I would sit out there on the bridge and wait for that to come right. through. And, you know, that was in, in 94, 5, and 6, and 7. That was when, you know, we were starting to get some modern engines thrown into the cars and there was a bit of a transition of what yeah. the hot rodding world was going through. And so, yeah, that, that was cool stuff. But, yep. but originally I was an off-road guy. And and I still am. I mean, yeah. the truck that I drive today still has a lift. I was going to say it that was, did not look stock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and 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 I can't, I can't get outside of that. No, oh, by the way, I'm still looking for another square body blazer. I was going to say uh, what you let it go for versus what oh, you could buy one today for is probably two different worlds. It's crazy. So I I ended up buying my not my exact one, but a replica of my Camaro okay. already. So I, I found one of those a few years ago up in New Jersey with like 9,000 miles. And I, oh, bought wow. it. I, I bought this thing like six years ago. So I got way ahead of the curve of what's oh, going know, on right yeah, now. It'd be double the price today. Exactly. Um, yeah. But but that was kind of my thing is, okay, I, I got to have this blazer and then I'm done. That's that's what I need. I need my blazer. <laughs> um, but it, it's crazy what cars are doing today. Oh, I know. It, I, it's nuts. I was just looking for a 70s Ford pickup just literally to go get some wood with yeah. for woodworking projects and now to get one that barely runs your thirty five hundred dollars yeah. so like that that's it, a five hundred dollar truck right. two it's years crazy. ago it's crazy <laughs> it, it is crazy i mean i i watched the numbers for this most recent barrett jackson and oh, i know gosh. that's always loony but it was beyond loony oh yeah yeah i mean it, i was i was telling some people the other day that this is the first time that i can remember where it's actually now cheaper to build than it is to buy. It used to be the opposite of that. There's, there's been a lot of discussion about that lately is right now, and you would have had to start to build two years ago. Yeah, right. Right now is a time where you could actually make some money yeah, building a car exactly. for auction. No doubt. And but through most of history, it was a you know 2% yeah. of the cars where maybe you could do that on. Right. And I mean, there, how many really beautiful, and I'm, I'm a custom guy, how many beautiful Mercs have gone through auction for fractions of what well, it would take steals. to build? You know, yeah. I mean, you get a fully done, chopped, painted Merc for twenty grand. Like yeah. it's fifteen grand worth of right. paint on that car. Right. On a you know, if you're doing it on the cheap, yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> it, it's it's crazy to think that you know, like I watched a, a there was a Blazer that I had followed the build of, yeah. um, and it went through the block at Barrett Jackson and it went for four hundred thousand dollars, and that's probably a two hundred thousand dollar build that they did yeah. um, at at retail prices, right. and it's like. Oh my God! You you can now do that and and actually make money. And you know and you know as a builder you're probably saying, well maybe we should do yeah. those projects. But like, but by the time I'm done with it, it will we gonna, still we'll be, be in, in a recession market. and things will change? Right. You know you'd yeah. have to build it for you. Right. You know. Well, and, and so so everybody always asks me, well dude, why don't you build stuff and sell them and sell them? You know. And I said, well that's always been our backup plan. My backup right. plan of okay if if all of a sudden you don't have customers coming through your door, you've got to have something. You got to keep your guys busy. We'll build something, try and sell it. But it's such a crapshoot of, you know, you're you're, yeah. you're building it based on how many different thoughts and ideas that everybody's going to like this. And it's not that you can't do that. You can do that. But in the end, 
You don't know. There could be some obscure car that you could buy dirt cheap, and for some reason it's in the next Fast and the Furious movie, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're like, I could have bought 10 of those <laughs> and just made them runners and probably tripled my money on yeah. all of them, You know, let yeah. alone doing any kind of custom work to yeah. them. Just yeah. the mechanic work. Yep. So uh, what else is in the shop these days? I mean, obviously you focused on on the 34 for mm-hmm. the last couple of years. So now you're, you're probably back to more normal operation. We are, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, we, we've got some full builds that are coming. Um, uh, I think our, our battery just ran out on the, on the GoPro there. Well, we'll continue to do audio there. And we'll just okay, put a graphic enough. on the screen for a few more minutes. We'll close it out. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't blow up, folks. We're still here. Oh. Um, but no, we've, we've, we've got some full builds coming. Mm-hmm. Um one of them um, is actually a, a Bronco build, which I'm kind okay. of excited about because that gets us a little bit into the off-road world. Um, but um, but it is nice to be back to, okay, we're going to put an AC system in or we're going right. to do a, just body and paint. Um, and Quick not, turnaround stuff probably has it, a feel good it, rather than it, look at the same is. vehicle and, all and day. And there's a nice, there's a nice, <laughs> they're nice profit centers as well. Right. So from a business standpoint, they they have that. But it But it's also nice that, your technicians and these guys that have been working on the same car for two and a half years get to see something else. Right. And, and, there's, and there's probably a bit of burnout that goes there into is. working on the same project there is. that long. And there was yeah. for all of us. And we all talked about it. It's like, and that's why those milestone moments were so huge yeah. that, okay, we can feel us getting one step closer to the end. Um, but now to the point where, okay, now we can actually physically touch something else, yeah. which is yep. just, it's so great. Um, but, but it is, but it, but going back to these cars and Barrett Jackson and things, it, it's a crazy time. I don't think I've talked to another shop that isn't just as busy as they can be. Yeah. And, and, and we talked about before we start recording, we know probably, we could probably name off 10 shops right now that are all looking for help, including you. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I don't know. I hope it's out there. I hope there's some Votech kids out there that like it. I know two guys that teach. One guy teaches high school Votech, and one teaches a, a post-high school Votech. Okay. And and they both have a couple kids interested in hot rods and custom, mm-hmm. but most of them are interested in collision to make money. Yeah. And I get, yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it, too. I get it, too. But that's part of the problem that yeah. we run into. Yeah. You know? So um, if, you have, if you have a car out there and you're at a car show and some little kid wants to hop in it, I don't care what kind of money you got in that car. You let that kid Absolutely. in that car. You let that kid make little room noises. Whatever it does yeah. to spark that interest. Because, yeah. A, we need the builders, yeah. even if they're 10 years away from being a builder. And, and B, we need to keep the hobby going that's for the next 25 years. That's why we years. do the model car make and take at that's our show right. here in yeah. Wichita. Because we want we want that to keep going. I mean, it, it's it's the inroads to all of that. Yeah, you we know? could probably do a whole other episode just on that yeah, show. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, since we've lost GoPro video here, let's let's go ahead and end up in the podcast for okay. now. And maybe we'll, we'll come back later sure. and talk. Uh, we probably need to talk about that show before the next year's yeah. uh, rendition of it. Uh, and uh, I appreciate your time. Appreciate you taking time to let me come to the shop this evening and hang out. And again, congratulations on that awesome, awesome uh, yeah. a, achievement for you and the whole crew yeah. and the owners and everybody. Yeah. No. It. It. it uh, I thank you very much for for allowing me this time. But. Once again, like I always want to make sure that 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 all of my team uh, gets their recognition, and you know, Mr. Bro, for allowing us that opportunity yeah. to to do those things. I mean, um, three years is a long time to be working on one person's car, and and I'm glad that it, it, it's a rarity that you you have a goal of building an amber car that's going to win, and and you actually get that. And yeah. I don't I don't want that to come across as as anything but we just feel fortunate exactly yeah yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of those deals where there'll, there'll be people that work their whole lives at the shop and they don't have the right lining up of yeah. time customer exactly whatever it takes to get once to in there. a lifetime deal yeah once in a lifetime and yep. well, awesome that you that you uh, brought the trophy home to to Kansas, as it were, even though you didn't <laughs> physically bring the trophy home. And uh, uh, I'll make sure to share on on the uh, the the post for this on social media. Of course, links to the social media stuff for sure. for your shop and Please. the website for the shop. Yeah, and then uh, uh, we'll put up some some links to some pictures since I didn't get to go. I'm sure we'll find some, <laughs> I'll find some pictures I can put a link or two to to uh, up go. to. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. And you have Thank yourself you a great evening. You too. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Can you imagine what that was like? I mean, first of all, a super long-term build. You've got years of your life invested into making this thing. And I know that when you get so in the weeds and in the details of it, you probably lose sight of, you know, the thousand foot view of, gosh, is this, is this what we need to be building? You just have to trust that the decisions you've made along the way have been the right ones. Cause I bet it is, 
I bet it's really difficult as it starts to come together to not question some earlier uh, decisions you made. But man, the car turned out beautiful and really, really cool to see that it came home. That the award came here to Kansas for the first time ever and uh, super proud of Tim and his whole crew on the job they did. Uh, just an amazing build. So that was uh, the end of January when I did that. I recorded this a month ago in February. Here we are at the end of March, and I'm finally recording the part you're seeing hearing right now. And uh, really, uh, it just still hasn't really dug in that, man, somebody from Kansas won the Amber Award. That's that's cool. That's cool to me. All right. So um, lots of stuff in the schedule for this year, but not a ton going on right now. It's kind of a slow time of year. This year, I'm skipping going to the Lone Star Roundup. I just I don't have enough vacation to do that trip like I normally would. I would normally leave on Wednesday and be gone uh, Wednesday afternoon, Friday, Saturday. Just don't have the vacation to do it this year. So we're not going to do that trip, unfortunately. And I, I know all weekend long, the whole weekend of the Lone Star Roundup, I'm going to be sitting at home, seeing all the pictures, and ticked off at myself I didn't go. It is what it is this year. I can't do everything. Uh, I hope that all of you watching this get out there and go to a car show this year. If you Even if you don't have a car, like I said in the intro, go check out one of these cool events somewhere. Find something that's traditional hot rods and customs because, A, that's my favorite kind of car. That's what I'm going to suggest. B, it's my favorite kind of people. Uh, I've been to a lot of other kinds of car shows, and I'm not really impressed with the car guys at those shows. Not all of them are, are, are bad, but there's a handful of them out there that just a Pain in the butt, and you don't want to be around them. And at least I don't want to be around them. Maybe I'm just snobby or picky or something, whatever. If you're listening to this on a podcast, you should know there's also the video version available on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, this is available as audio on almost any podcast pod, podcast platform out there. Wow, I didn't realize that was a tongue twister. Um and so you can listen to it while you're on the way to work or while you're walking or, you know, the dog or whatever, driving down the highway, whatever you want to do. Just know there's multiple options there. Uh, if you enjoy what I've been doing, hey, please go check out the Patreon, uh, roidboyproductions.com slash Patreon. That's where uh, a handful of very dedicated people uh, give me some money every month uh, so that I can continue to do podcasts and coverage and that kind of thing, because uh, it is expensive to to go to these shows. Um the Lone Star Roundup trip, that's usually about a five or six hundred dollar weekend for me if I go on the cheap. And and you know, that's all in my pocket. That doesn't you know, Roadboy Productions barely makes any money each year. In fact, last year it lost money, just did the taxes. Um, and the year before it lost money. And the year before that, I think I made a hundred bucks total or something like that. It was stupid and small. So just so you know, what I do here is all out of my own pocket, and I'm not begging you for money right now, although it kind of sounds like it, kind of feels like it. maybe I am. I'm just telling you that I do this because I love these cars and the people that these cars have allowed me to meet. And I really think more of you should come to these events and see these people. And I'm probably just preaching to the choir here. You know, if you're listening to this already, you're probably pretty much into it. Take somebody else. Take a buddy who's, you know, shown some interest in your car, but doesn't have a car of his own. Take, take a kid with parents' permission to a car show. And and let them you know set in, in, in your hot rod or someone else's hot rod, and, and you know get that spark in their mind, so that maybe someday, some of these cars will still have a home once all of us that are currently in it are gone. So until next time, folks, stay safe, don't die, and I'll see you at a show. Thanks for listening to another episode of Chrome Pipes and Pinstripes. If you got to this point, that means you listened to the whole show, and I appreciate that. So I want to throw one thing out here. If you dig what I do with these podcasts, you dig what I do with RoyBoyProductions.com, please consider going over to Patreon.com slash RoyBoyProductions, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash RoyBoyProductions. That's where if you feel like it, you can say, hey, you know what? I'll throw I'll throw Roy Boy a dollar a month or five dollars a month or ten dollars a month because I appreciate what he does. 
talking about myself in the third person sounds really weird. So, you know, it's forgive me for all the weirdness here. If you dig what I do, please come over here and help support what I do because it takes a lot of money to to go to these events, to stay in the hotels, to to buy this expensive equipment. All of my equipment is getting pretty old. So the the podcast recorder right now is held together with uh, with just prayer. Uh, I think that's the only thing making it continue to work. And I will need to buy a new one at some point this year. And they're they're quite pricey. So I'm not trying to complain. Just saying thank you for all the people who have helped me over the years uh, by buying hats and shirts and stuff. I'll have new shirts out this year. And uh, in the meantime, you can go over to RoyBoyProductions.com. Check out all the stuff I have there. If you feel like throwing a couple dollars a month at me, I really would appreciate it. It's Patreon.com slash RoyBoyProductions. Um, and uh, I'll work out some stuff that the people who donate there get a little bit of, a little bit of heads up and get some stuff ahead of time. All right. Thanks for listening. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye now. Well, somebody's got to ride this dinosaur.